Good evening. Praise the Lord. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you tonight in Jesus' name. Thank Lord for the wonderful name of Jesus that you've given us. The name is above every name. We thank Lord for our salvation, deliverance all through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, you healed us, you delivered us, you redeemed us. We give you, give you all the praise and glory, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's over our Bibles here to 2 Corinthians. Read about who we are in Christ Jesus. Now, here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I want to encourage you to read these scriptures every day. I mean, we got so many scriptures to read every day, right? But read, these are going to remind you that you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away, and old things become new. So we'll start here in, in first, uh, 2 Corinthians, sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning of verse 17. Therefore, if any person be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. All things are of God have reconciled himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ, reconciled the world and himself, not imputing their trespass to them, and has committed us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we ambassadors Christ, as though God beseech you by us, we pray in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. Now, verse 21. For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteous of God in him. Now let's read up. Uh, let's go to Romans chapter 5. And we'll back this up a little bit more and give us some more ammo here. In Romans chapter 5. Now the scripture says here in uh, verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we should be saved the wrath through him. Notice the term now. Now, mean, now being justified means now being made right with God. Not when we get to heaven. You know, that's... Well, I did. That's kind of how I thought how things were. You know, well, you become right when you got to heaven. No, Jesus' blood's made us right now. So that's why we can go to the throne room of God boldly. The scripture teaches us in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly on the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help time and need. Now, it'd probably be easy to do that if you felt like you've done everything okay. You know, did all, like we'd say in growing up, as you say your prayers, you know. But no, Jesus' blood makes us right all the time. And that, when we want to really know that we go to God boldly with confidence is when we've done wrong. Because God sees us in Christ Jesus. See, so often, you know, some of us were really intimidated to go to God. We were kind of afraid of God because maybe there's some sin in our life. Or we're not right with God or people really don't know what we've really done. But no, we're right with God because of Jesus, because of his blood. And most people say amen in church, but no, we need to really see ourselves this way. We really can't love ourselves. If we can't love ourselves, we can't love our neighbor. So we have to really love ourselves, and we have to see that we're right with God, and that's going to help us love ourselves. And then we can love everybody else. It's much more easier to love thy neighbors thyself. So we don't want to be insecure. You know, so often many of us were insecure for years, for a long time. We were insecure, thinking we're not right with God. And, 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 you know, not complete. We're still working on our life, trying to get right with God. Then we get right with God. We'll get the blessings. No, Jesus' blood has made us right right now with God. Now we're justified by his blood. And it goes on, it says here in Romans, in Romans chapter 5, now verse 9. Much more than being justified by his blood, we should be saved the wrath through him. Verse 15 says, but not, Romans 5 now, but not as offense, so as a free gift. For if through the fence of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift of grace, which by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abound the many. Now, verse 17. Now, this one you want to read from Amplified Bible, because this tells us that there were ruling and reigning in Christ Jesus now in this life. So, verse 17, the King James says here, For by one man's offense death reigned, by one, much more they have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. So, it's a gift. We receive Jesus, we become right with God. We're not spending the rest of our Christian life to become right with God. The moment we became born again by receiving Jesus Christ, the Lord, right then we became right with God and have been right with God ever since, even when we did wrong. And we're not to do wrong. But the more we know that we're right with God through Jesus Christ, that he made us righteous, the more confidence we have, the more bolder we're going to be, the more secure we're going to be. It's so often Christians are insecure. You know, I was They're trying, always trying to become complete with God. Always had this project working on me that I, if I get this out of the way, then I, God's really going to like me or really going to move in my life. No, he's made us right with God through Jesus Christ. And the things we do for good deeds and blessings, tithing, giving, everything like that, we do it as unto the Lord. But we don't do it, become right with God. Jesus' blood made us right with God. And that makes a Christian secure. You know, we've all seen some child. I mean, you almost weep. 
They were so intimidated. You, you saw them in school. You know, I can remember just me being in school. There was this one girl, I almost could cry thinking about her. And she just was uh, p pitiful. And people made fun of her and picked on her, you know, and stuff. And, and just because she was insecure in the way she carried herself. Well, we carry ourselves in Christ Jesus. And you notice the devil picks on people like that. He takes advantage of people's weaknesses. And we all have some kind of weakness in the flesh. But we need to create and declare we can do all things through Christ and see us as the righteousness of God in Christ and carry ourselves that way. That we're walking through this life, ruling and reigning in Christ Jesus, more than conquerors. And as we see ourselves that way, then we'll be portray ourselves that way, our behavior will act that way. We'll be much more confident, self-secure in Christ Jesus, knowing what he did for us. So here it's this, this verse 17, again, Romans 5. For by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Much more they have received the months of grace, the gift of right shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall be many made righteous. So God made us righteous through Jesus, through what Jesus did. Not because of what we're doing or our good conduct or the things that we've done. No, praise God for the things we've done. We should have done them. Excuse me, just one moment. Praise God. All right, so God made us right through Jesus Christ, and we need to see ourselves that we're right with God. And the more we see ourselves we're right with God because Jesus did, the easier it is for to receive from the Lord. Because if we think there's something we got to get rid of, if we get rid of it, then God's going to bless us, then we'll always be on this forever treadmill, just trying to get to God in a rocking chair, making motions but not going anyplace. So we don't depend on our, our rights, what we do right. We want to depend just on totally on Jesus, what he did. He's the perfect one. He made us perfect in Christ. But our performance is never perfect. We're as faithful as we want to be. I mean, we all want to be faithful, right, to God? You know, boy, if we knew God wanted us to do something, we're, hey, we're going to jump out on it. Well, that's our heart. That's what we have. But we still will come up short. We'll, we'll make mistakes. We will fail. And when we do, we don't get on condemnation and guilt. That's the time to boldly stand up and say, I'm the righteous of God in Christ. And just keep telling yourself that way. The more insecure you feel, the more guilty you feel, the more condemnation you feel, the more you want to decree and declare that you're right with God through Jesus Christ, that you are the righteous of God in Christ. Not wait to do this, but do it boldly in the name of Jesus and stand up on God's promises that he gave us and decree and declare. This is what God's word says. You know that? Divine healing scripture sheet we often talk about. You know, it's important to, to like script, healing scriptures, to read every day. And read scriptures like we just read here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I know I'm giving you a lot of homework, but this helps us stay built up. When you feel, I don't know, insecure, I don't know what else to say, you know, just feel like that maybe God's not, you know, not doing anything in your life. That just boldly stand up and say to yourself, I'm the righteous of God in Christ. If you had to quote her all night till you fall asleep, I'm the righteous of God in Christ. Jesus made me right with God. I'm the righteous of, Christ. I'm the righteous of God in Christ. That builds up inside of us whether we realize it or not. That's the best thing we can say to guilt and condemnation, to always decree that we're righteous of God in Christ. I wish this is the first thing you could teach every person that gets born again. That'd be just set them aside. Say, listen, you're going to leave the church here, and I just want you to say this all the time, whether you're standing or not. I want you to begin to say, because you, you just received Jesus Christ, your Lord, okay? Now, you're not going to stand all this stuff, but I want you to do it anyway. I want you to keep saying you're the righteous of God in Christ. Just l listen to what I'm telling you here, and just keep saying it. That's going to build that person up. And they're going to be through a lot less struggles than some of us went through. Because we were always trying to get complete with God. Knew there was, you know, we know ourselves. So we know that there's something here we can uh, work on. And then if I get that all worked out, then God's going to bless me. Then I'll get my healing. Then I'll get my miracle job or whatever it is. No, stop it. In Jesus' name, Jesus already bought this for us and gave it to us. We don't have to become complete. We are complete. We start out the gate of complete. We start out as a, that's like the baby's born. The baby's complete. It's got all the parts. It's just going to grow up. Well, we grow in Christ Jesus, but we don't become more righteous. And we don't become less righteous because we sinned today and gotten strife with someone we shouldn't have gotten strife with. And I apologize. I didn't. But, you know, you have to sometimes go to people and say, I apologize. What I said, the tone of voice I used was wrong. But we're still right with God, no matter we use the right tone of voice or not. 
because what happens is the devil will drag us back over here in guilt and condemnation. And, and, and of course, we don't know it's him. We just think it's maybe God telling us this, this stuff. And you know, you didn't do this enough. You didn't do this enough. And you, you missed the. I, I got relatives that, that believed if you missed Sunday night church, you'd miss the rapture. And you know, can imagine people like me hear stuff like that? I just recently got born again at the time. So you don't, want me, you don't want to miss the rapture. I mean, you'd be left. You have to take the mark of the beast. You have 666 six, six, six in your forehead. And, and here you go around looking like that and be begging for food and all this stuff. So you, you couldn't possibly have security thinking you're going to get left behind. You, you did something wrong. You'll be left behind. How could a child, a little child, be secure if they thought the parents are going to leave them behind? You know, I'll tell you, say, I'm just going to leave here at the mall. No, the little kid would be frantic spree. You know, it just wouldn't, it just, it'd be so warped and messed up. And so often Christians are this way, good-hearted people trying to serve God, trying to follow God, trying to, you know, do things right. But we fall short. We do things wrong. Even on our best behavior, we mess up. It's just like, do you ever try to please someone and you just almost like the world say, bent over backwards, do it, and you still messed up because you were trying so hard to please that person, you know, and you couldn't be yourself. You know, just be yourself. Because that's who God created you to be you. I can't be you and you can't be me. I wouldn't make a good you. And you couldn't, you know, you definitely you don't want to be me. So, but the point is, you're you. And God knew all that. He, he gave you this personality. He gave you the way that you are. And he made you a new creature in Christ Jesus. And God, God always, your father God, always sees you perfect in Christ Jesus. He, just the way he sees Jesus, he sees you. Because he sees you in Christ Jesus. And when we receive the Lord Jesus, we were in Christ. So if we tell that new convert, person who just got born again, to keep saying this, rights of God in Christ, they'll far surpass many dear people, all because they got started out decreeing and declaring who they are in Christ Jesus. And they won't have to suffer with the guilt and condemnation. Think about the times you've had so much guilt and condemnation in life. Upset because you didn't do it, didn't do it right, didn't, whatever it was. No, we, we just, that's a time to decree, decree and declare, Father God, I think because of Jesus, I'm right with you. The Bible says we're complete. The Bible says we're spotless. The Bible says we're flawless, faultless in Christ Jesus. Man, can you imagine if you just talk that way to people? <laughs> and they're talking about their flaws. Well, I'm flawless. Well, they could point out some stuff. You know, well, you, 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 you know, I've been with you when you ate salad and you had croutons. You're not faultless. You crunch too much. We all have those little things. I mean, I don't, but other people do. No, but everybody's got something. You know, well, they can look at those things. Look at it. But that's not God. He doesn't see that. He sees us in Christ Jesus. That's how we want to see ourselves. We're unblameable, unprovable, sanctified. I had family members and loved relatives and, and friends of mine that were working on their life to become sanctified. So they give up things of the world. And they boast about how they don't do this anymore. They don't go to worldly events and because they're living a sanctified life. Jesus made us sanctified. His blood sanctified us. What he did on the cross. If you're not supposed to do something, fine. But just because you go someplace, don't feel guilty because you went there. I mean, there's all, all kinds of things would happen. I mean, I always thought if I went to a basketball game, I could miss the rapture, let alone go to a movie. Well, you know, if you're not supposed to go to the movie, don't go to the movie. But that doesn't make you less righteous or unrighteous if you do go. You just have to deal with more guilt and guilty feelings that come to you in condemnation. And if the enemy can keep us in guilt and condemnation, he'll keep us from walking in victory and keep us denying ourselves from receiving from God. We'll just, we'll, in our own minds, we'll try to disqualify ourselves from receiving from God because of something we did. Right when you do wrong is when you say, I'm the righteous of God in Christ. To keep yourself self-centered in Christ Jesus, knowing you're right on course. You're just locked in right there on Jesus, and, and nothing gets you off of that. Then you apologize to somebody, apologize to somebody. We all have to do stuff like that, you know? We mess up. But with God, we're always right. We're in Christ Jesus. And as he is, the Bible says in 1 John 4, 17, to my Jesus, as he is, so in this world. How is Jesus? He's perfect. He's blameless, and his blood makes us that way. Our, our spirit man is a brand new in Christ Jesus. So perfect is our spirit man. The Holy Spirit came and dwelt inside of us the moment we received Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That's how perfect our spirit man is. And we're righteous because of what Jesus did. And we stay righteous because of what he did. He finished the work. He completed it. He freely gave it to us. He said it's finished. So we're not trying to finish the salvation plan that Jesus bought, paid for. And salvation means it's sozo, S-O-Z-O. 
It means heal, the Greek word, healed, hold. I think it's the same thing in Hebrew. He healed, hold, delivered, redeemed, blessed, prosperous. It's all conclusive term. But most of us didn't know that. We came and received Jesus. We thought we just got saved and we're not going to hell. Thank God if that was the only thing we got, that'd be the greatest thing there is, hands down. But in this was the salvation plan of completeness, that God gave us the blessings of Abraham. Not only that, he seated us in heavenly places. He gave us divine health, divine healing. The Holy Spirit dwells inside of us to lead us and guide us. You and I are trying to make decisions about what we're supposed to do. I mean, all of us have to make decisions of what we're trying to do. We're trying to listen to God about what the Lord wants us to do. And if we do go in a wrong direction, brothers and sisters, he's still big enough to make up for us. Because we're kids, we're going to mess up. He knows that. So he made it so it's a faultless, flawless contra contract, covenant we have with God. That there's just no way out of it. We're blessed no matter what, right or wrong at the time. We're not trying to, you know, how many times you get an email from someone, if you send this on to people, you'll get a blessing. The implication is if you don't, they used to be real severe. That if you didn't, something bad could happen to you. You know, you could lose your whatever. I didn't want to say it, but you, yeah. And if you're like me, you're going to want to send it on to somebody. Because you, you're so afraid that you could miss God and, you know, and then something bad would happen. And that's why, that, look, I didn't send that on. And it keeps you in bondage and people do that to you. Love everybody, but they'll, look, they'll just keep you in some kind of bondage because you're not good enough. Pull you off the side, let you know, give you some real long spiritual look. And I was praying for this morning. The, the Lord showed me that you're supposed to do this. And if you'll do that, you'll get this blessing. Guy calls me up one time, told me, the Lord told me to go back, that I'm supposed, he's supposed to tell me to go back and lay in carpet. I'm thinking, you know, I just got done talking to him. He wanted me to totally leave it alone. I, I didn't say nothing to him. You know, I just listened to him. He, 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 it's like this prophetic word for me, you know. Praise God. What are you going to do, huh? Just love her body and just don't let it affect you. You know, these are things you're already praying about anyway. You used to have this pastor. God bless him, man, that man. Oh, He would call me up and tell me I need to move to his state. And he was convincing. And I got this where I'm supposed to be living where I'm supposed to be living. You got me? And he'd call me up. We'd talk maybe once a month or so. And I, what, by the time, brothers and sisters, I got off the phone. I mean, I hope, I don't know if he heard me. I'm crying. Now, I'm, I'm getting off phone 10, 11 o'clock at night. Just got talking to this pastor, real big pastor, and he's got this, you know, real great church going. I got a, you know, handful of people coming to Bible study. And he's telling me, you know, in other words, you're out of the will of God. You come and come to our church. You have a covering. You'll be here, and you'll live in our state and everything else. By the time he gets done talking to me, I'd be crying, crying during the night because I messed up. I'm not, you know, I, I didn't hear from God. It'd take the Lord a few days to get me straightened around. I don't want you talking to him anymore, son. He keeps talking you out of your ministry. I don't even tell you this stuff. Then the Lord has to get me built back up again. See, words like this would happen. And sometimes the Lord would have me stay away from people that did that. Because I wasn't mature enough yet to be able to take it. Now, it's a little different now. But then, you're so afraid you're not right with God, and that's why you don't have the blessing. And when you act that way and you display yourself that way, and that's your behavior, people are going to push you around. The world will run over you. And so with the church world. You love everybody. I didn't say anything to him. I loved on that guy. Praise the Lord. Good thing. You know, I'm not going to say what I did for him, but praise the Lord. Anyway, but he was very convincing because you're in a problem right now. You're in a situation. And the reason you're in that situation is because you've done something wrong. And that's what people do to you. They always get you looking at you. Never look at you. Look at Jesus only. He's the perfect one. Get your eyes back on those promises. When you get those feelings, see if I'd have known to done that then, then I could have defended myself against the condemnation of guilt that's coming to me. You know, I didn't say anything to brother. Brother, you want to take me on in prayer? You, you want to take me on in faithfulness? I never said nothing to him. Because he had me convinced that there was something else going on. And as long as people or the enemy can get you looking at you, you'll find something wrong. And if you're, they can keep you looking at you, you'll all your life be find something wrong. And in your own mind, not in God's, you'll disqualify yourself from receiving God. And you'll tell yourself, that's why I don't have it. 
That's exactly why I don't have it. No, just look at Jesus. What do you mean look at Jesus? Go back to those promises, find some like the ones we read, find some to yourself, and keep reminding yourself. If you don't find any, keep saying, just keep saying the rights you got in Christ. When you feel guilty, when you feel like you've missed God, when you feel like people don't like you, when you feel like all those feelings that come to us, that people intimidate us and all that, just keep saying the rights of God in Christ. That's going to build you up. And you won't go through some of the things that I went through. You know, I didn't do that. So therefore, I was picked on. And when you're weak, you get picked on by spiritual bullies, so to speak. And they have the ministry of guilt and condemnation. You don't have to fuss around with them. I've always done my part not to say anything to them. Just avoid it, turn over the Lord. But see, it take the Lord several days to get me built back up because I listened to somebody else. Remember when your kids went and stayed somewhere else and you came home and you don't have your kid anymore? You, they turned in like someone else? Now, how long did it take you to get them back on track? There's nothing wrong with your child. You want your child to be your child. And they come back acting like some of the kid they stayed all night with or went to church camp with or whoever. And you're thinking, okay, this is going to take a while to get my child back, and I don't want them to be that person anymore. If you and I would just stay consistently, it, it probably wouldn't make a difference who is around. But if we start changing and becoming worse off and more guilt and more condemnation, the Lord doesn't want that. He doesn't want Amos' children to become weak. He doesn't want Amos' children to be insecure. What parent would want a child insecure? No, it touches your heart. You're thinking, my, don't be this way, honey. So you struck out, so you lost the game. You got out there and you played, you know? And they're crying, they're upset because of something happened. No, you encourage them. You build them back up in Jesus' name and encourage them. That's okay, so watch, you learn something from it. That's, our, that's what the Holy Spirit's always doing. He's always encouraging us. He's our comforter. He exhorts us. He edifies us. When? When we need to be edified, when we be exhorted, when you're doing, when you're on your game, you know, and you're crushing it, you don't need to be, you know, encouraged then. It's when you feel like you failed and you're not doing enough and you tell yourself, that's why I don't have the blessing, whatever the blessing is that you're trying to believe God for. Don't do what I did. Get rid of that stuff right away. How are you going to do it? Keep saying I'm right to God in Christ. If you don't have anything else to say, just keep saying that. When you don't feel like you're spiritual or God loves you or you're not doing enough for God or you can't hear from God or you've messed up so much God can't use you and the reason you don't have your blessings is because there's got to be something wrong in your life that you're doing because I'd have it now but there wasn't. No, you don't get, don't enter at that. Don't let Satan draw you out there. You just keep saying, I'm the righteous of God in Christ. I'm the righteous of God in Christ. I'm the righteous of God in Christ. I'm righteous of God in Christ. I'm righteous of God in Christ. Now, he, you, we keep doing that. He's defenseless. You know, it's just, it's defenseless. And he can't do anything about it. And just one thing about it helps build us up is praying the Spirit. Just keep praying the Spirit about it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I give you all the praise and glory. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. And you, you, just by just praising God and thanking God helps us get through things. But the most powerful thing about us is that we're, because of what Jesus did, we're right with God. Always right with God. 24-7, seven, seven days a week. No matter we're doing things right or not, we're still righteous. We, once we receive Jesus, we never become unrighteous. We're always righteous. We don't have to be, get, be, become forgiven. We are the forgiven. Jesus paid the price once. He forgave us before we were born. He took our sins before we were born. This is all done. This is all God's idea before the foundation of the world. And this is something God wanted to do. So we don't have to try to get forgiven, do penance or anything else. I mean, you know, going to confessional booths is going to keep a person in bondage the rest of their life. It's not going to do any good. It's going to keep them on sin consciousness. Every time they sin, they've got to run off and tell somebody about it. Well, we need to realize that we're right with God because of Jesus' blood. And that he made us right with God. You know, and keep decreeing and declare that and doing what God's word says to do. By what? Remind ourselves we're in Christ Jesus. We're in him. We are accepted. We're God's beloved. That girl I went to school with, she never felt accepted. She always felt rejected. Today I could have done something about it, you know, your kid at the time. But your heart went out to her. And so people made fun of her. People picked on her. I mean, it almost makes you cry, man. How people are taken advantage of. 
And when a Christian doesn't know they're right with God because of Jesus, I mean, just people pick on them, make them feel scared, insecure, feel bad because they don't pray enough, miss church. Well, I mean, just it, it just the list is endless of people can bring up and get the person to start condemning themselves, make them feel bad. That's one of the reasons why people don't go to church. They couldn't do it. I just thought that I just was going to slip out of the body of Christ after I got born there because I thought, you know, I'm giving it a bad name. And then, you know, and I was heading in that direction. I just thought, well, I'll just start to drift away a little bit. And after a while, people had been a while since they see me. I thought, what happened to that guy? He's come to church. And that's when the Lord got me those faith tapes. Because he knew I was getting ready to head out. Thinking I can't keep I can't live it. I may give Christianity a bad name like others weren't, you know. But you don't think that at the time. Now you keep saying I'm the righteous God to Christ. You're God's daughter. You're God's child. You're God's son. And he sees you right with him because of Jesus. Because he sees you in Jesus. That's how powerful the blood of Jesus is. And God doesn't want you picked on. Your father God wants his arms wrapped around you to protect you. To hold you. Just like that little child when a thunderstorm, thunderstorm runs to where mom's at in bed. Gets any of the covers with her. She puts her arm around him or her and they fall back to sleep. And that's what your father God does to you. He wants you to know that you're the righteous of God in Christ. He never wants you to sweat anything. He wants you to know that you're perfect in his sight. He sees no flaws. He doesn't want you to think about anything you come up short. Just like you wouldn't be upset at your little boy for striking out. Or if you're a little girl, you know, messing up in ballet. No. You'd want them encouraged. Father God loves you much more than that. Trust in his love. And the best thing to do, get back at guilt and condemnation. Why don't you just get back at it? From now on, just keep saying, I'm the rights of God in Christ. All what it did to you to try to torment your life, now you can get back at it. It sure feels good to get back at it, doesn't it? And just keep decreeing from now on, no matter what, especially when you don't do right. I am the rights of God in Christ. And just keep saying that. You don't have to understand it. It affects your spirit, man. It affects your whole makeup. When we know that Jesus made us right, his blood, this is what God wanted. He wanted to have children he could live in and them not have any guilt and condemnation. This was all his plan that we could become right with, with him through Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he's our Lord and Savior. And we give you all the praise and glory for everything he did for us through Jesus Christ. Amen. If you haven't received Jesus today, I want you to, so far, I want you to receive him now. I'm going to read these scriptures. Maybe you're not too sure if you've ever been born again or not. That may be a big word you don't understand, but our term. But the thing is, it's just simply asking Jesus in your heart. And when you do it, you're set for eternity. And the Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God has raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes righteous, with the mouth confession and salvation. For, verse 13, for whosoever calls the man the Lord shall be saved. See how simple it is? You're just going to call on Jesus and ask him to come in your heart. All right, let's say this together. Just say it out loud. Follow me. I'll lead you into it. Repeat after me. Father God, I come to you to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord. I believe Jesus crucified, died on the cross, and took my sins. And God, you raised him from the dead. And he's alive today. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord. I receive you as my Lord today. Thank you for saving me from going to hell. And God, I thank you now you're my Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Real simple prayer like that. Now you're set throughout eternity. I want to encourage you to start reading the Gospel of John. If you've got an you know, iPhone, you can get an app on your phone. A free app, a Bible app. Read the, read the Gospel. Just look at con context. Just put in there the Gospel of John. It'll take you there and start reading that. And you'll start, yeah, this will start helping you, you know. And then watch this here, these programs. They're going to be a great, the videos here on Facebook and YouTube, they're great help to you. Hey, if you got a prayer request, contact me, Jesse Rich Ministries. I'm still, uh, haven't got some of those prayer sheets out. Please forgive me. <laughs> All right, so they're coming. I apologize. Hey, until next time, it's Brother Rich, I love you, praying for you. Remember, Jesus is always more than enough.